Uh, alrighty. Um, I don't know how to start this video. Um, yeah. Woo! Okay, so this one, today's video is going to be pretty, like, um, in, uh, I don't even know how to word it. Today's video is going to be, like, super deep, um, very personal, and, um, just a trigger warning for anyone that struggles with mental health and stuff like that. Um, this may not be the video for you, as I'm going to talk about um, some various things that have happened to me throughout um, my life that has led me to where I am today. And the reason I'm making this video um, is definitely this season. This season in particular um, the channel's definitely grown to a place that is outside my comfort zone in terms of meeting new people, meeting other people, and um, just fitting in in a community setting. And it's definitely been taking a huge toll on me. And I just want to explain myself for anyone that has met me in person because... It's honestly, it's, it's kind of like traumatizing for me when I meet new people. And I know that when I meet someone at Canada's Wonderland that's a fan of the channel, I'm super awkward and I hate it. I absolutely hate that about myself. I hate that I'm not this super energetic, like out there, like super like social. Like I wish I could be that. I really do. I wish I could be that. Um, but instead... I, uh, when someone goes, oh my god, Amusement Insiders, or it's Brendan, or I know you guys, like, I instantly shut down. And in that moment, my head literally slows down to, like, half a second for every second, and I overthink and overanalyze everything, and I'm literally just panicking, and I'm like, just be cool, just be cool, just be cool, just be cool, and anyone who's met me, you'll you'll know that like I uh, I ask very generic questions to try and get the conversation going because I don't want to shut down. And trust me, I like when people come up and introduce themselves to me, and I love meeting new people. In fact, I've met so many amazing people this season. I just wish I had the courage to like be a better person when you meet me. And every time you walk away, I sit there and I just regret every second of that interaction. Um, and I just want to apologize to anyone that has met me um, and has thought that I didn't like you or um, that I wasn't interested in getting to know you. It's literally all me. Um, I struggle with severe anxiety and um, depression, and I have severe trust in people. And that is why I felt like I really needed to make this video and explain myself and put myself out there. Um, and what's interesting is I never really had intentions to do this until recently. Um, I got to talking to someone um, in that profession um, in terms of things that have happened to me in my past, and it was kind of like their idea for me to get it out there and be a little more open about it because they said that like I hold my voice holds this like pain and they can like hear the pain in my voice and I just like it seems like I'm holding on to the pain and like I'm not letting it out and I get that. I get I'm extremely reserved. Anyone who knows me and has known me for a while knows I'm super sensitive, like beyond sensitive. Um a bug could look at me the wrong way and I'll cry. <laughs> Um, and I overanalyze everything. I upload a video on YouTube and I sit there for the first hour, literally panicking. Are people going to hate it? Um, if they do hate it, what do I do? I always feel like I owe everyone an apology, um, all the time. And I just feel like I'm not doing enough. I, I always feel like I'm not doing enough. I always feel like my channel is the worst channel out there. I feel like my content is the worst content out there. I hate myself. I hate my channel. Um, and thanks to an amazing new group of people that I've been able to meet, especially this season, I've had like the ability to kind of catch myself before I fall into that. Um, and that's an important message. Um, I just want anyone, if, if anyone listening to this video or watching this video, because obviously I don't have the courage to put myself in front of a camera and talk about my 
um, my mental health problems at the current moment. I'm using a video of mine to hide behind with my voice because that's classic me. Anyone who knows my channel, I do like to hide. Unfortunately, that is just me. I don't like the way I look. Um, and yeah, again, that comes with being not, not having confidence. Um, and I'm working on it. I am. Trust me, I'm working on it. And you guys are a super big part of why I'm still here. And my confidence building up, the people that meet me, um, the people that thank me for my content, um, the people that continue to just uplift me, it's it's really important because uh, I, I do struggle deeply with it. Now, I'm rambling. I should probably get to the point. Um, okay, I apologize if I sound like not comfortable making this video. I am comfortable. I would never make this video if I wasn't comfortable. It's just really deep. Uh, I'm gonna ex I'm gonna try and explain this really quick. I'm gonna try and rush this video as much as possible. I don't want people sitting through like a 30 minute video. Um, I guess the one message I want people to learn and understand from this is um, if I can make it and get through it on the other side, like so can you. And I'm so thankful I did. That's the message I want there for you to get out of this video. I am so thankful I did. Um, life is truly great. Life has curveballs. Life has really crummy moments, but life also has super amazing moments. Those uplifting experiences, those life changing experiences. It has so much to offer. It really does. And you just got to look for it. You got to step outside of that. And I'm going to talk about that maybe in some other videos. You know, maybe I'll end up starting another channel. I'm not sure. I don't know how this video is going to be received. Um, sometimes in the community, I feel like I, I do get hated on. Sometimes it is deserved. Sometimes it's not. And that does leave me in a position where I panic um, for everything I upload. But um, I talk to people in my life and I've talked to a specific someone that I've been see like kind of like speaking to and getting help with. And uh, they think it's a good idea. Um, and I feel like it'll help people understand that I don't hate you. I'm not a bad person, I swear. I'm just someone that's struggling like a lot of people are. This is a very normal experience. If you're struggling right now or if you're going through a hard time, just know that a lot of us are. Um, and it's okay. And in fact, I wish I had spoken up when I was a teenager that I wasn't okay. It probably would have helped a lot if I did. And I... If there was a piece of advice I could give you right now, tell someone that you're not okay. Tell your parents you're not okay. Tell a friend you're not okay. Speak to someone. I think like the biggest step in my life was speaking to someone recently about this. Um, in fact, there's only two people that know all these details I'm about to say um, in this video, and that's Craiga um, and someone that I have recently spoken to. So I guess to start off the story, um, my father uh, was someone that was extremely close to me, someone that used to take me to Wonderland all the time, and that is why I kind of fell in love with Wonderland. I was an enthusiast. Rides used to scare me. Um, he used to force me on rides. There's funny photos of me on, like, the bat and stuff where I look absolutely terrified as, like, a kid. Um, and he was just someone really close to me. He was someone that, like, paid attention to me, which is... Um, key for me because I was never popular and there was obviously always differences about me that made me bullied or stand out and it's unfortunate but um, that's who that's what made me who I am today so I am super thankful that I never did change um, and I'm super thankful that I stayed true to myself whether it led to me not fitting in and whether it led me to being extremely bullied, I'm thankful for that. But my father was someone that I was extremely close with. And um, basically what had happened is, to start the story off, I'm leaving a lot of information out, but I'm doing that to keep it somewhat short. I think this video is already at 10 minutes, and I'm so sorry. If you're still listening to this, I appreciate it. But to start it off, um, I guess my dad got a really serious promotion um, with his company. He became vice president of his company, and my family moved. Um, and I had to go to a new school, and 
Um, I left a school where I kind of had other misfits to fit in with. That school had a group of people like me, and I fit in there, and it was great. And I had, you know, we were bullied as a group, but we had a group to, to lie on. Um, but then my family moved as my dad got promoted, and I went to a new school. And um, in this school, obviously, I had to make friends. And it wasn't easy for various experiences. Um, I'm trying to keep it as short as possible. Uh, I obviously have a different voice, I guess you could say. Um, it stands out a little more. Um, I'm not your back then when I was in school. Like, you know, I wasn't your typical macho man um, to keep it short and simple. And I got bullied for it. And it was very difficult for me to make friends. In fact, I remember I ended up making one friend um, this, that year. And, um, I even remember him saying that he had to keep our friendship on the low. So he didn't get bullied and we would hang out after school. Um, well, my dad passed away about halfway through that first year at that school. And it was traumatizing to me because, um, I didn't really know it was coming. Um, it was something my mom had chosen to hide from us as kids. Um, the two older kids in my family, my older siblings knew that it was coming, but um, I hadn't. I remember I was at school and I came home for lunch and they dropped the news on me out of nowhere. And I literally remember my life spinning like it was just shock. And I was sick to my stomach and I didn't talk to anyone in my family. I didn't want to talk to anyone in my family. And I shut my family out. Um, and I kept to myself, and I didn't go to school for like two weeks, um, which is normal. Um, I then went back to school, and of course, everyone, you know, I was in a school that would extremely bullied me, but everyone was being oddly nice to me after this experience. I think I, we were just starting our second semester of the school year, something like that. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's, it's a blur because it was so long ago. Um, and everyone was being oddly nice. Everyone was like, you know, offering help. It was really weird. I guess that's what humans do. Um, people were talking to me. People wanted to hang out with me after school. Um, it was it was weird. It was different. The popular people um, asked to hang out. So we started hanging out. Um, we'd go to my house and we'd all hang out in my room and in my basement and just at my place. And little did I know that um, it was all part of a scheme. Uh, this is probably the most traumatizing thing that has ever happened to me. And I wish I had seeked help from my family after this. But I'm an Irish family and me and my siblings, it was always competition who had the better life. And I guess we all hid things from each other to make ourselves seem like we had decent lives. I never told anyone I was getting bullied. I never seeked help, and I wish I had, but um, turns out this popular group of people um, one day at my house had gathered a bunch of my dad's left belongings to me, and we went into the forest near my house, and um, they burned my dad's belongings in, uh, in front of me and uh, documented it and filmed it and shared it with the whole school. And um, I just remember hiding my anger in that moment, trying to pretend like it like wasn't the worst thing that had ever happened to me. Um, and I remember um, kind of just like running away and going home because I always refused to cry in front of people. My family, I used to refuse. I refused to cry in front of people at school. I used to refuse to cry when I was getting bullied. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I guess I never really had time to, to heal from the like culture shock and just like the shock that, you know, for once I felt like I was finally being accepted and welcomed into like the popular people group. And in turn, it ended up to be like a really cruel, just like <laughs> way to like, um, hurt me and it worked and it was embarrassing and there were, um, yeah, there were videos of it. And no one ever apologized for that. I still haven't spoken to anyone at that school about what had happened. And it got even worse. 
I don't know if it could get worse from there, but uh, the one friend that I had, the only person that I would hang out with after school and talk to in this specific grade, um, was convinced to fight me on camera, to beat me up after school um, because they had found out that we talked and that we were friends. So everyone convinced him to fight me after school. I remember he had kind of like found me during the school day to kind of be like, I have to do it, but don't worry, I won't hurt you too bad, but I have to do it. And I just remember accepting it because I was so weak and so like I had no ability or power or courage or confidence to stand up for myself. I just accepted it and said, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll take it, I'll do it. It's, it's okay, it's whatever. And I accepted it and after school, Everyone forced us over to the field, um, and in front of the entire school, he beat me up, punched me in the head. Um, I just remember standing there, taking a bunch of punches to the head, um, being kicked, and it was all uh, filmed and documented, like everything, because I was the outcast that never stood up for myself, never spoke up, and I just allowed it. Um, and that was the end of those bad experiences, but I just, it was, those two things back to back were like the biggest backstabs or betrayals to me in my life that led me to like not trust people and to fear people and be scared of people. So I always kept to myself after that. Um, and from that moment I kind of just like never trusted people easily I never told anyone anything I didn't talk to my own family about anything I pretended like life was great and like I had friends and um, then I moved on into high school and because of the area we were living in I went to one specific high school and I think I lasted two weeks there because obviously my voice is different and I stood out, especially as a teenager. And I drew a lot of attention to myself and I didn't have the ability to stand up for myself. I wish I did. I wish I had the confidence I do today in terms of standing up for people and myself. I would have stood up for myself if I had even the ounce of confidence I have now. Um, but I remember literally every single day I was getting um, basically all my money taken from me. Um, and bullied and beat up to the point where I was receiving death threats from one specific student at this school who I know deep down didn't mean it. Like, he never would have actually killed me or ended me. But um, he threatened it, and it scared me because back then I was, you know, scared of everything, including myself and every person. So I would sit in the washroom and eat my uh, my lunch and then eventually I just gave up and stopped going to school so I transferred schools and in this time frame um, oh I feel like I should put a trigger warning here I'm so sorry if this is really deep I get that this is like I don't even know what to say here I'm sorry um Um, the, the trigger warning here, this is this is going to touch on like a really sensitive self-harm um, subject. So if you're not comfortable with that, please click off. Um, but um, someone really close to me in my life, um, I was sleeping and I woke up at 3 a.m. And I just remember hearing um, some weird noises and... I never have the courage. I, I was that person that was afraid of dying and always afraid of everything. Um, I didn't have the courage to go check, but something in me just like forced me to go check. And I, uh, I went and checked and I had seen someone extremely close to me do something really dumb that almost um, led to them not existing anymore. I'm trying to be really careful with words here. Uh, and if I hadn't had like gotten up that that weird hour and you know gone to check on this person, like they wouldn't be here anymore. And that wasn't even the first. That wasn't even sorry the last time that happened. It it happened again like six months later. Um, this time the person at least had the courage to come and seek help um, from me, 
when they attempted it again. And I just remember that was an extremely traumatizing experience. And I was never able to talk to anyone about it because my family doesn't believe in mental health um, and help. All that um, that I just went over kind of happened in my teenage years um, leading into my young adult years. Um, and then after school and erasing a lot of in between, um, I had a career at a very popular um, company that I worked for for 10 to 11 years of my life. And it was absolutely amazing. And I had some of the best people I've ever worked for, I've I worked for. And um, near the end of my career, I started, I was placed in the last two years at the busiest location in all of York region. Um, and my boss, district manager, who had worked for the company for 20 years that I absolutely adored, uh, was laid off. And that was extremely um, shocking and hurtful to me just because she was the most uplifting, supportive, like best thing to ever happen to me, believed in me, uplifted me, um, just was like a rock in my life. Um, so I was clearly upset. And we had this new district manager that was just all about numbers and not about culture at all, faked it, um, and was just any little mistake would penalize it. Um, I do want to stress that in this next part, um, I do take blame for what happened. I am mature enough to understand that what I did was wrong. <laughs> um, but it just goes back into why trust is such a hard thing for me. I had, uh, my team was like my family at this location. Uh, extremely close. Uh, we were all like family. We had group chats. We'd all go hang out. Um, and um, this one specific guy, um, in our close little group at the store, I was the store manager. Um, he was quitting, he was leaving due to, to moving. And I, we got along really well. We hung out, the small group of us all the time. There was, you know, nothing going on. I hadn't written him up. There was nothing to warrant anything. Out of nowhere decides to just send all of the screenshots in our little private group of me not liking my boss, um, my new boss, to her, to my new boss, and it led to me losing my 10-plus uh, year career at this company that I absolutely loved. Um, actions have consequences, and what had happened to me is was deserved, and I'm thankful for the experience, and I lawyered up, obviously, because in my long time there I hadn't been written up and obviously there were things that had happened um, that led to me you know moving on to this next bit of my career um, but I took two years off with the money that I got um, so I took about two years off of work because I was so hurt um, and betrayed and that led me to Amusement Insiders and I'm now a store manager again while also running Amusement Insiders but um, there's a lot of things that have happened in my life that have led me to be afraid of people, terrified of people. Um, there's people that I'll have close to me, and sometimes they do do things that warrant me to not trust them, and sometimes there's things that they d don't do, and I still don't trust them, and that's on me. But I struggle with trust. I struggle with confidence. I struggle with... Um, believing in myself and I really just wanted to share that with you guys as an audience I mean you've been a part of my life for four years now like five years I don't even know it's been a while and um, I'm gonna be honest like you're a big reason as to um, why I've grown so much A lot, to be honest. Like, well, I have grown a lot. I've met a lot of really good people this season. Really good people this season. Our Discord is like my family. Um, people that I hang out with um, are so uplifting. Like, 
I literally, I remember in Discord two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, I like, I don't know what it was, but I just like, I was like, I don't like my content. My con, I, I don't, like my content seems like subpar now. And a bunch of people were just like, you're too hard on yourself. Like, it's good. Like, it's, and they were all just like listing off reasons as to why I should like, um, you know, why it's great and like how because of it there's like a big group of like people that we you know we all hang out we have the discord and these are all things like you don't think about as like a person or something someone running a a channel and it's just like this channel seems to always catch me when I'm at my lowest like I'll be falling down a cliff falling down a hill and you guys and my friends and this channel literally are a safety net in my life because I'm held accountable for things that I do, whether it be times that I misspeak, times where I'm out of line, or times where I'm not feeling my best. Like, you guys are always there. My friends are always there. Craig is always there. Discord's always there. I have something to look forward to. Um, and it's like honestly like I don't even know what to say I feel like I'm losing myself right now um not literally like that um I just mean like I've, I think I've rambled too much I wanted to explain myself because um I don't want anyone feeling like they're not good enough to hang out with me or they're not good enough to come up to me to speak to me or that I don't like you or that I think I'm too cool for you that that's not the case it never was the case it never will be the case I'm literally some overweight dude that makes videos about roller coasters and Canada's wonderland I will never be too good for you um so please don't ever think that and at any time that you see me at Canada's wonderland or anywhere feel free to come up and say hi to like hang out with us trust me I'm more afraid of you than you are of me and I am not thinking anything negative about you it is literally me struggling to find some courage to to speak to open up and to uh, overcome the social anxiety and mistrust that I have again I really just wanted um to explain myself um and I hope you guys understand I hope that like there's no one out there that you know, thinks that I'm a horrible person because I wasn't super energetic when you met me. I haven't received any complaints, by the way. That's not why I'm making this video. Um, Anyone that hangs out at me at the park knows that every time someone comes up and says hi and then they walk away, I shut down. Like, I literally am like, oh, my God, I wish I handled that better. Um, Or I wish I could have said more. Like, why did I ask that stupid question? Like, it, it's just it's such a mess anyone that struggles with anxiety and depression probably can totally relate to what I'm saying right now um, and the beautiful thing is like it's getting better like it'll get better and life will always continue to improve just take those little steps and you're gonna take bunches of steps backwards sometimes you're gonna fall all the way down a cliff that you just climbed um, you just got to reclimb it this time with like the lessons you've learned um, with the experiences that you learned, it's okay to spend a whole day crying in your bed. It's okay to not to want to go hang out with your friends for a day or two. Just don't let yourself slip and stay there. Don't stay stuck. Get up and try again. I promise you, if I could make it, you can too. And I, I, like, I know I don't sound confident right now. That's just because this is a lot... Um, But I am confident. I know I'm going to make it through life. I know you're going to make it through life. You guys are so important to me. If you're struggling to find importance in your life or like that life just isn't um, as amazing as you expected, just know that like I rely on you. Like I do. I'm not saying that. I know that's like the cheesiest thing anyone can possibly say. I get that. It is cheesy. But I do rely on you. Anyone in my Discord server who has been in that Discord server since the channel has started can vouch that there have been moments where I'm literally shutting down 
or wanting to give up, delete the channel and everything. And it's always like you guys, the viewers, the people that like, you know, thank me, like the amazing people like that you guys are. It's you that literally like save are my safety net. So thank you. Like truthfully, I know I probably don't show it enough. I probably um, don't say thank you enough. Um, I wish I could thank everyone. Um, but yeah, I promise I'll get better. Continue to come say hi. Don't be afraid. I hope this video didn't do the opposite of what I wanted it to do. I want. I wanted it to explain. I feel like I'm the worst person explaining emotion. I bet you there's someone watching this video right now being like, are you serious? I get it. Um, I just wanted to explain myself. I guess like, you know, five, six years doing this YouTube channel, maybe it's about time I've come forward and opened up a little more and maybe I'll continue to open up. Um, but yeah, trust and social environments are my weakness. I'm not a leader, I'm a follower. And as of this season, it's been placing me in like a leader position. Um, the channel's a lot more popular than it's ever been. Like we go to Wonderland and we get recognized beyond belief and it's it's a super young audience. I, we've had people come up and say that um, they loved like certain things about my video. There's these two girls, like I think in 2019 that told me that my videos were inspiring because they were bullied in school and it's stuff like that that like made me panic. But then I realize that like there are people that look up to me as crazy as that is making uh, videos about roller coasters and I'm going to own that I'm going to be a better mentor I'm going to talk and be open about my problems and how I've overcome them and how life has changed since I was bullied and beat up and backstabbed and betrayed and life does get better it really does and there are ways to help make it better quicker. And again, if you take anything from this video, speak up. Tell a friend, tell a family member, tell anyone. Call a 1-800 number, any of them near you, kids help phone. Call someone, speak to someone, let someone know you're not okay or what's going on in your life, it helps. Again, recently when I had that chance to speak to someone about what had happened to me throughout my life, um, it helped. I don't know what it was. It was like the floodgates had opened up and like there was this huge um, weight uh, lifted off my um, my chest. And that was when I realized that what had happened to me with my dad's belongings had um, probably taken a bigger toll on me than I ever wanted to uh, realize. And then the events after that and just never fitting in is the constant theme in my life. Never fitting in, never feeling good enough, never fe feeling cool enough. And you just gotta find your crowd. My biggest advice for anyone struggling out there, feeling alone or like they don't have friends or they're not a, a part of like a crowd or anything, find your people. What are your hobbies? What are your interests? Go join those groups on Instagram, Facebook, um, anywhere. Join the clubs. Join the groups. If you're a coaster nerd and, and you feel alone, like join our Discord server. We are trying to make it as safe of a place as it possibly can. And obviously, it's not perfect, but we are working on it. Um, if you ever don't feel respected by anyone on the Amusement Insiders team or in Discord, just let us know. Let any mod know. We will take care of it join us. Don't be alone. I chose to be alone for most of my life and I wish I could go back and open up to even just a family member of mine. Um, but yeah, I hope this helped even half a person. I hope um, this gives it more clarity as to why I'm so dull um, and shy and anxious and why I don't um, handle people well. Um, but I know I want to do good and I know I want to do better and I want to lead better and I owe that to you guys. I really do. Again, not trying to be cheesy. I owe it to you guys. You guys are amazing, like really amazing. And this channel and you are honestly the most important thing in my life now. 
literally. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you so much. For anyone that's made it this far, I think we're literally at the 34 minute mark. That's embarrassing. Um, yeah, thank you. Honestly, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, feel free to reach out to me. Yeah, um, I promise I'm good. I, this isn't like a cry for help, by the way. Like, um, I'm fine. I uh, I have a great group of friends. I have you guys. I'm fine. When I mean like life gets better, I do mean that. I will really be speaking out on this a lot more in terms of helping anyone that needs a voice to help guide them through any tough experience. Like, I promise I will get better and be able to lead in that. I am seeking help, um, and it has done wonders already, and I know that it will only get better from here. So thanks again. Thank you so much. Um, there will be another video coming out around the same time as this an update on wonderland um i just wanted to get this out here i did um record this uh i don't know when this is going up i recorded this like a couple days before haunt so i don't know if this is going up the day before haunt or the day day before haunt or the first day of haunt um, whenever it goes up um yeah again thank you thank you thank you thank you um see you at the park feel free to hang out with us and uh thanks for getting to know me a little more in depth have a good one guys bye <laughs>